Hello, good afternoon, everybody. I uh, hope everyone's doing okay. Welcome to the, the We Are Careers show series finale. Um, hard to believe, really, that uh, we've got to this stage already. It does feel like it's gone incredibly quickly, but here we are, Christmas almost upon us. Um, and uh, today we've got not one, but two great guests with us. We're going to talk a little bit more about what we're going to be covering in the show um, and everything that we're going to be trying to pack into the next half an hour um, in the next couple of minutes. But before we do that, Quick introductions, if this is the first time that you're coming across the show. Uh, my name is Chris Webb. I'm a higher education careers professional, uh, member of the CDI, registered career development professional. And uh, I won't add any more titles onto that, <laughs> as that's more than enough to kind of remember. Uh, and I'm joined, as always, by my fantastic co-host, Meet Sabir. Uh, Sabir, how are you doing? We're here. There are no technical issues. It's a good day, right? I know. I can't actually believe that we haven't had a single glitch so far. So I'm going to touch wood and say this is going to be a smooth sailing show. So welcome, everybody. It's great to see you here. As always, please use the chat box feature. Let us know where are you watching from? Where, which part of the UK or the world are you watching us from right now? Use the chat box feature for those of you who are in the Facebook community and the LinkedIn community. Right now, we are streaming live on three different platforms. So you should be watching us on YouTube, LinkedIn, or the Facebook community. Now, I encourage those of you who are watching to co continue to contribute to the comment threads. We've got two fantastic guests who I'm going to be coming on to very shortly. And speaking of Christmas, because this is our show just before Christmas and the New Year's, are you rocking a Christmas jumper today or any kind of Christmas paraphernalia? Maybe you're wearing Christmas socks or underwear or, I don't know, Christmas hat. Maybe you're feeling the Christmas vibe right now. Let us know. And if you take a selfie and, and send it to us, we'd love to see, we'd love to share that. Let's get this Christmas festive vibe going. My name is Meet Sabir, as Chris said. I work in 12 countries as a registered career development practitioner, and I specialize in working with young international graduate professionals who are looking to transform their career potential. I'm also the creator of the 4.0 Class Academy, which is all about upskilling international career coaches, helping them deliver even more powerful career support to their clients without the burnout. Now, I'm going to be doing the shout out, and then shortly after, I'm going to be introducing you to our fabulous two guests very shortly. Now, as always, okay, there is a resources document that's going to be released straight after, shortly after the show, should I say. Now, that document and all the goodies and the content and the news stories that we feature in today's show is only available to if you are a CDI member. Now, if you're watching right now and you're wondering, what does it mean to be a CDI member? How do I get involved? Head on over to the CDI website, click on and check it out for less than a you know, cost of a Starbucks coffee a day, um, you can cover the membership. And not only do you get access to this fantastic show, but a whole ton of other resources as well. Now, each show, we like to celebrate the newest RCDP members of the CDI community. And if you can join me today, let's show some love and give our new members a warm welcome to the group. Now, I'm going to run through the list. There is a bit of a big list. Is your name on the list? Pop in the chat, come and say hello, introduce yourself, let us know what part of the career guidance profession are you working in. Perhaps you're watching and you see a fellow colleague's name. I've already been told by one of our guests that he spotted a familiar name. You know, is your friend's name on the list? If yes, tag them. Remember, we want to celebrate them becoming members together. And as always, we encourage you and we invite you to press that like button if you're enjoying these shows and the awesome guests that we bring each time. And make sure that you subscribe, hit that bell button on YouTube channel. And if you watch these shows as a non-member, learn how you can become a member because there's so much goodness and so much value that you can get from the membership. So here goes with the newest RCDP members. We've got Debbie Dimmock, Janine Barron, Sasha Wellings, Joanne Larkham, John Morrison, Chris Wayne, Daniela Outram, Lisa Prant, Olga Sadiska, I hope I said that name right, Angela Dankin, Joanne Bishop, and Philip Nelson. So welcome and congratulations. Drop those clapping emojis and welcome and a smiley face, however it is that you want to welcome them. And I think um, Sabine, we've got John Morrison is here. So some of, definitely some of our list are here today, which is quite nice. 
Fabulous. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's great to see that. And I also want to give an additional shout out, and I'm going to be talking about this more later on. And that is to Dave Crudell, who is our outgoing CDI president and giving a warm welcome to Caroline Perry. Caroline, are you in there somewhere? Come and say hello, who is now our new CDI president. And of course, John Ambrose. Congratulations, John, for being elected as the new CDI director. Now, you can probably spot, I've got two guests here today. We've got two guests here today. So firstly, I'm going to come over to you, Rish. Rish, come and introduce yourself. What should people, what should the profession and those watching today know about you? Um, so hi there, and thank you very much for having me. And hello to everyone who's watching. So like Chris, I'm also a higher education careers professional. I'm also a CDI member, an AGCAS member. Uh, I do a little bit of private practice as well. Uh, but I think the reason that you wanted me here today is because I do a bit of blogging and podcasting. And that's something that we're going to come on and talk about in a little while, I believe. Yes, we are, Rich. So thank you for that great introduction. And then I'm going to head on over now to Connor. Connor, let us know. Come and say hello. What should the viewers know about you? Yeah, so I'm Connor Cotton. I'm the managing director of a company called Not Going to Uni. Um, I'm sure needs no explanation because most of the careers leads here and a lot of familiar names have worked with us in different guises and push our content. And I've actually done a couple of um, previous events for the CDI. One I know earlier this year with the lovely Carolyn Parry, which was really enjoyable. Um, one of the reasons I'm there, some of you may have seen me on being on things like GB News, in things like Sunday Times and so on, discussing careers, discussing apprenticeships and discussing alternatives to university. Um, so certainly taking it into the mainstream. So looking forward to talking about that a bit more today. Thank you for that, Connor. And actually, both of our guests have already given you a little bit of a teaser of what we're going to be exploring today. So, Chris, what is our theme today? What are we going to be exploring? And as always, if you're hearing anything that any of us are talking about here today that resonates with you, or perhaps maybe you've even got questions for Connor or Rish or Chris or for myself, please do use the chat box feature pop them in the chat, we will make a point of coming to them. Um, and also just Carolyn is just saying she's here, she's wearing her president's badge um, with great pride. And we've also got Dave here as well, um, saying thanks for the shout out as well. And for uh, and another Facebook user has just said as well, thanks Dave for all that you've done during your term as president. So yes, congratulations. So Chris, what are we talking about here today? What are we gonna be exploring? Yeah, thanks, Sabir. So I, I think, you know, this is our kind of series finale and we sort of wanted to have something, didn't we, quite topical, something that's really sort of hitting kind of careers professionals at the moment. And that's why we've kind of gone with the topic of bringing careers, education, information, advice and guidance into the mainstream. Now, it's a very, very broad topic. And like a lot of our shows, we always struggle to keep things into 30 minutes, as we know, but we're going to give it a good old go. And the, the two guests we've got, I think, are particularly kind of useful to hear from on this subject. As they both kind of mentioned, they've been involved in talking about kind of careers work outside maybe of the careers bubble. Uh, now, we know that obviously, you know, as a profession, fantastically supportive group of people, but sometimes it's about how do we get that message maybe beyond the parameters of kind of the careers community and out to an audience maybe that is less familiar with the work we do. So that's what we're going to kind of come to first. So, uh, Rish, if I can kind of bring you in first, if that's okay, and talk a little bit about some of the work that you've been doing that's maybe slightly outside of the career sphere and um, particularly I think earlier this year uh, an appearance on, on local radio in Nottingham. Yeah actually there's uh, it was three appearances overall and this was naturally a bit of a consequence of the pandemic so uh, I don't know if it's the same in other regions but uh, BBC Radio Nottingham did uh, have this campaign where they were trying to support people who maybe had been made redundant or were put on furlough um, as and, and as part of that, there were some conversations about jobs. So they had recruitment specialists on. And you know what? I took the initiative. I just I just got in contact with them and said, look, if you want someone to come on and talk about careers and what the implications are for, for people who are maybe out of work or are feeling insecure in their current situation, then happy to do that. So one of the producers called me up and I say, I ended up making three appearances. Um, and the main thing that I really wanted to do was to reassure people that even at a time of heightened anxiety, which I think we're still feeling, to be honest, but even in, in those circumstances, that it's important to know exactly what's going on. So naturally, media rhetoric can be a bit sensationalist. And I wanted to say, well, you know what? There actually are jobs out there. And even if you aren't finding jobs that are immediately apparent to you, here's things that you can do to help yourself. So one of the 
conversations I had was actually focusing upon impressing employers. So, you know, if you're applying for something, what can you put in your application? And if you're having an interview, what kinds of things can you do? Because naturally those are nerve wracking. And for those people who had been put on furlough, been made redundant, however, of course your confidence is going to have taken a hit. So that was what my main focus was. Mm. No, thanks, Rich. And I think it's a really important point about that idea of sort of raising awareness, but challenging perceptions, as you say, that might be kind of quite mainstream perceptions of things like the job market. How is it doing? You know, how might someone approach an employee within that job market? But actually coming at that from that career development standpoint. And I guess, Connor, it's a good time to sort of bring you in from that point of view as well. So I know you've mentioned, obviously, featuring in, you know, sort of more mainstream press publications like the Sunday Times. And particularly a number of our viewers may have seen you on, on the recent kind of panels on GB News, where... I guess you were offering that perspective that perhaps none of the other panelists were able to offer in the sense mm. of having much better knowledge about early careers recruitment and, and the kind of career development world. So just wanted to kind of get your perspective on what that was like kind of uh, appearing on those panels and, and what sort of difference you felt it made, I guess. Yeah, um, obviously going on live TV was an interesting experience to say the least. Um, thankfully, I actually, a week before I did the in-person interview, I did one virtually with them. Um, which is about the cost of university and things like this. Um, actually, I think the thing that resonates really well when I speak is I'm talking from personal experience. I'm in my early 20s. I run a company called Not Going to Uni. Funny enough, didn't go to uni and, and started my career there. So the, the producer, actually, who initially got in contact with me from GB News, found my career story online and she was like, perfect. It makes so much sense. Um, let's put you on. But, I mean, it was really, it was great to see that they were giving such limelight to one younger people such as myself, um, because I know that a lot of the major news channels often go for the older generations and often it's usually very university heavy, actually. Yeah. Um, and, and two, actually giving really diverse v viewpoints. You had Bobby C go on there, who was obviously won the university challenge and was talking about university on the whole. Um, right from Oxford and Cambridge, right down to um, even some of those online university courses. Um, you had Joe Valente, who won The Apprentice, um, who was talking about his career. And actually, his viewpoint was quite mixed in the sense of obviously he was like, well, actually, I want to give my son and daughter the opportunity to do what they want. You know, I'm not going to say to them, yeah, I didn't go to university. I built a really successful business. And I was very much given the role of playing the, the not going to university camp, mm -hmm. actually, it was quite a diverse conversation and I don't think it really came out with any end product of don't go to university or do go to university. Mm. It's very mixed. And I think that's the right thing to do. I think sometimes these publications um, and, and news outlets can go a bit too heavy one way and not enough on the other. Uh, and, and actually my final point I closed on, um, mm. on the GB news interview, which is available if anyone wants to watch it on, on YouTube and so on, was actually just whatever the young person decides, whether it's your son, daughter, whether your career is lead support, mm -hmm. just support them. Like, yeah. it, it, you know, you shouldn't then turn around and go, well, you're not going to university, I don't care, or you are going to university. So just support them. Like, that's all you can do. Yeah, yeah. Like, absolutely. We're human. Absolutely. And I think it was, you're right, I think it was very balanced, you know, given... Yeah given the fact that it was quite a diverse panel. Mm. Um, I, I suppose kind of coming back to, similarly to, to lean on from what Richard said, from maybe the press publication point of view, so when you've kind of featured in things like, say, mm. the Sunday mm. Times or, or more mainstream press publications, has it kind of been a similar thing? Have people sort of reached out to you or has it been a case of you kind yeah. of uh, approaching organisations? Yeah, it's been uh, mainly I've been reached out to. I've, so I've done a few of those, um, a mixture of podcasts, mixture of like actually written up articles, um, and also some radio interviews like Rish with um, everyone from sort of talk radio to sort of localised BBC radios as well. And usually they approach me. I think I've done a really big bit of work on my personal brand in the last, well, since I started my career, really, to actually put myself out there as someone that's talking about young people that's, that's been in my position. Um, and, and I even started like a, a vlog to vlog my mm -hmm. month of running a business at 22. And like yeah. what it's like, because I believe me, it's not easy and it's, it is yeah. a really weird experience. And I think by putting myself out there so much and being open to speak, um, even like I said, I did that um, webinar with Carolyn back in January, February time. That's then opened up those opportunities for me, which have been really, really exciting. Um, and, you know, I can't can't thank the people that have invited me onto these things enough. And more importantly, it's giving back to hopefully young people, parents, whoever's watching. Hopefully they get some benefit from listening to the things I've had to say. 
Well, it's so interesting, Connor, that you sort of kind of talk about being a, a source of inspiration, because as you say, the world is f- full of, and particularly sort of so, sort of social media um, mm. of negativity, and it's quite easy to sort of kind of get lost in that, right? And everyone, I can see everyone's nodding their heads, and then sort of add misinformation to that. Oh, mm. it's it's a you know it can be a melting pot of disaster, Beautiful. and this is why uh, you know we as professionals are so much needed so i love sort of kind of hearing and i know sort of you know that i've sort of kind of got to learn about wish's backstory as a result of sort of kind of doing this show um that i didn't know about up until i sort of kind of connected with them regarding this and that was so interesting and fascinating and con it's lovely to hear about you know because what you both i feel are connected on is personal branding and this is something that i know i talk about as a professional as a career coach, as a professional, about encouraging my clients. And so it's important as well that we as professionals, right, the advice that we're dispensing to others, we also sort of kind of practice what we preach as well. And I just want to bring in a couple of comments before we go to the next question, which is that we've got Facebook user here, I think, um, Cocktail, who it is, so let me know who it was in the chat box. He's saying, what a great thing to do, Rish. Um, that's so positive and practical about what you were talking earlier about the interviews that you've done. And I know later on as well, towards the social, keep listening. If you're listening to this and it's kind of firing a light underneath you and you're thinking, hey, you know what? I want to develop my personal brand and I want to sort of kind of get our profession and our message and our vision of what we do as professionals out there. You want some practical tips of how to do that. Stay tuned. We're going to be talking about that towards the end of the show so make sure you stay tuned for that and then we've just got Dave who's just popped in to say in the chat it's fabulous that proper career professionals such as Connor and Rish are getting airtime to showcase the value that career professionals bring to the people that they work with as a result of their families organizations and the wider community and your positive input is fantastic Connor so you've definitely got showing some love thank you everybody we love the positive energy you know we like to keep these shows full of positivity because as I said there is enough negativity out there if you want that go for that this show is not for you um you know we're trying to create here you know drive and inspiration and so kind of coming to to that based on your experiences and Con I'm going to come to you first and then Rich I'll come to you next why do you feel I think we've sort of started big we began to touch upon this why do you think it is important that as career professionals we endeavor to break out of our sort of very own career spheres bubble when discussing key topics that impact our sector and beyond. And like alternative groups through education, a career, dis- you know, the career decision making, but young people and older people, wherever you are on your career journey. So, Connor, if I come to you first. Mm. I think, as a, well, if, let's say you're a careers leader working in a local school, I think you, you're missing a trick if you're not broadening your net to actually be you know engaging with local public lo- local publications and things like this because at the end of the day school a school or a university or it's, it's a very small ecosystem of the world um and that's why having this sort of national coverage is, is really good because i think people have started to realize that you can't just work in your ecosystem because <laughs> if you do you're only ever going to speak to the same people aren't you let's face it at the end of the day you're only ever going to speak to your small bubble in that school in that university in that town in, in that village so so really breaking down that barrier is whether that's through the power of social media i mean i don't know maybe one of the careers leaders here is going to start a youtube channel and become a youtube sensation do it like there are so many ways to get your message out there now it's not it's actually not just going on mainstream media you can if you if you can build a website, make a YouTube channel, and start vlogging about you know supporting young people with careers. People will watch it. People will engage in the content if you can get it to be interesting enough and uh, that element of um, engaging uh, sort of nature that kids want, that and also still giving enough information for parents. Then there's no reason why that can't be a really great thing to do. I was going to say to me, I think it's interesting um, that Connor's just mentioned that because this is something we couldn't fit in, wasn't it, around kind of how much we wanted to go into social media. Mm. And I know that, uh, you know, some of the stuff that we're including in the show resources document today is around Jake Richin's recent kind of TikTok challenge that a lot of careers leaders, careers professionals got involved in. Mm. So I think, you know, that is such a large topic we're going to look to re-explore aren't we in, in our kind of next series but it's such an important point that it's beyond those mainstream platforms into kind of you know i suppose guerrilla tactics for for promoting yeah, yeah. Your own so you, you've got to remember parents are, i mean especially mums on facebook mums and facebook go hand in hand <laughs> so let's just clarify that before we go any further 
Um, so there's still an audience on social media and it obviously yeah. across platforms. You've also got TikTok, great video platform, short form video content, very easy to get your content trending on there as well. Instagram yeah. reels, very much the same at the moment. There's so there's yeah. so much opportunity. You're Mainstream so, media is part of a bigger strategy. Yeah, you're so right, Connor. You're so right. And like Chris said, you know, this is a subject I know with this is going to be a whole show in itself around sort of the, you know, sort of kind of how to use and, and you know, kind of we're going to be including some of the resources that we're talking about here today. So if you're wondering and this is wedding your appetite and you're thinking, how do I do this and how do I start this? There's definitely. And I know for, for a fact that the CDI website, when you are a member, there are courses now, sort of digital bites that you can access at when you have have your membership so you know if there's one reason to join the membership you know these are going to be some of the support and sort of kind of webinars and short bite digital bites that you can access to i know we've got comments coming through i'm going to come to them in a minute but rish i just want to bring you in uh because i think it's important as well that we hear from your perspective because i know you are currently very sort of kind of um you know working with the universe in a university so i'd love to hear your perspective on what we're exploring here today so rish what are your thoughts about this and what would you add to the conversation well, I, I would start off by going back about 10 or 11 years. So my first media interview as a careers professional was with a guy called Mark Dennison on, on Radio Nottingham. And it was, it was ahead of A-level results day. I was working in a college at the time. And the conversation was, what support would you offer to parents who are trying to prepare their, their darlings for A-level results day in terms of what could go right and what could go wrong? And I just remember saying, well, the, the key thing here is, okay, whatever the whatever the outcome just the main thing you can do as a parent is put the kettle on get the biscuits out and be prepared to listen because they'll either be over the moon or they'll be feeling like it's the worst day of their life and i remember a level results day did feel like the worst day of my life as well um and so the points that that connor's making and you're making and, and, and john's made in the in the chat is it's all about parents in at that stage now, this is why I think it's really interesting that what people like Jake are doing on TikTok, because if I'm a parent of a certain age, I'm less likely to engage with TikTok, but my kids who are that target age group are more likely to engage with it. And I had a wonderful conversation with Jake Richings recently where I was saying, look, the stuff that I'm doing is going out to a different audience and the stuff that you're doing. So we're not clashing with each other. We're engaging in different ways. And that's why the mainstream media aspect is also very important because we need to think about who who are the people listening. The stuff that I did last year, I'm very aware of the fact that that wasn't going to be heard by a 16 year old who'd just been let go from their job at the local cafe. That was going to be more likely to be somebody who is an adult who's going, oh God, now what do I do? So it's that awareness of who you're talking to is so, so important. I love that targeting the message. Chris, I'll come to you in a second. I just mm. want to pick up on what Rich was saying about targeting your uh, message, thinking about well, who's the audience, who are you talking to? And, you know, that sort of kind of um, element about collaboration rather than competitiveness, because you're right, you know, all of us are doing something. We all as professionals, as career professionals, and each can add value to something. So it's finding your collaborators. Like, you know, this is the reason why Chris and I, Sort of kind of started this show uh, i'm going to bring chris in now and i know there's lots of facebook sort of kind of comments i'll just quickly touch upon them john morrison um who is our newly elected uh, elected board member hey john great to see you here different john <laughs> oh is that different john is that not john morrison okay sorry there we go i thought it was the same john morrison there we go um but john morrison different john morrison is saying that from experience parental influence is so important particularly when we're talking about young people's decision making mm -hmm. i'm still hearing students feeling they have to go to university and not entertain the idea of apprentice you know mm -hmm. he's going on a, he's gone on to share that how their new year's resolution in terms of the work that the space that they are working in is to have a collection of student voices who are engaged with career support to do short videos on their experiences of working with a qualified careers advisor. I love that because that fits in so nicely as well with the campaign that the CDI are doing as well. I'll come later to more of the comments, but Chris, what's our final question today for our guests? Yeah, I, I think too many Johns in the CDI is our takeaway there. So. <laughs> right? It's like... <laughs> no, thanks, Mia. I mean, I think, you know, some great kind of comments through from, uh, you know, generally on the chat, but also just reflections really on, on kind of what Connor and Rish have been saying. Um, I, I suppose, you know, as Connor's kind of mentioned or, or been sort of alluding to that, that authenticity of what 
the, you know, of the person that is speaking. And, and, you know, to come back to what Rish is saying, you know, knowing where to hit your audience, going to where the audience is, as opposed to kind of worrying about, will the content I have hit every single member of the world? <laughs> very, very difficult. So I think that idea, you know, as people have already mentioned, collaboration, you know, rather than competition, as you've said, Sabir. I think just before we kind of get onto the, the, the final sort of call to action for people that are watching, Rish, I just want to come back to you very quickly. It's something you've kind of mentioned in our, our sort of private chat, which I think is particularly pertinent and is maybe, I'm maybe going to regret asking because it's quite a loaded question that we probably don't have time to, to fully discuss. But a really good point that you made about does the mainstream media want to engage with careers professionals? Um, and I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on this. And obviously people in the chat uh, on the Facebook community of practice, let us know what you think. You know, is, is there an appetite out there? Um, what's your perspective on it, Rish? I think the mainstream media are more likely to talk to someone like Connor, um, which is absolutely fine because you offer a brilliant perspective. You talk from experience and you offer balance. But I can't now forgive me. I can't remember who it was who posted on Twitter. There was an, a, a Guardian piece where someone wrote in to an agony aunt and then the agony aunt was offering careers advice. And it's like an agony aunt, if you are suffering from a bereavement, let's say, the agony aunt wouldn't say, yeah, go and chat to your mate or, or look up some information. They'd say, go and speak to a counsellor. Or if they're suffering, I mean, severe pre-show, we'd sort of said, oh, if you had a broken leg, you wouldn't just, you know, ring your friend. You'd, you'd get yourself down to A&E, wouldn't you? Yeah. Um, and if you break your leg, don't come running to me. Um, but, <laughs> but no one ever says, why don't you speak to a career professional? And when they do, and again, I'll hark back to my college days in particular, it's, oh yeah, go and see the careers advisor. They'll tell you what to do. Mm. So this is the, you know, this is the thing that we, all of us as careers professionals are, are very familiar with. I don't know what the solution is, but I'm hoping mm. that some of the stuff that we're doing around kind of branded content aimed at different audiences, will eventually infiltrate because the mainstream media do have narratives and that's never become more apparent than in in the last sort of five or six years whereby they have a narrative and they want to uphold it well that, that's such a good point Rich. And i think particularly when we see how much the media narrative influences government and policy um you know particularly if we have a government that may be quite uh, susceptible to, to maybe being influenced by by the way that the you know media and public opinion turn so i think it's, it's a really fair point i mean Connor, just before we move on to our final talking point, you know, you've had quite a lot of these interactions through, uh, you know, channels like GB News, where we've got kind of, you know, a suite of speakers who are perhaps slightly more well known, talking about issues on, on perhaps a broader level, aimed at kind of a public audience. Do you kind of get the impression that people have much of an awareness about the work that careers professionals do and, and maybe how uh, we can cut through that, I guess? Yeah, I think the big problem is there's a, fr a throwaway term that Rish used that is used a lot of just go and speak to your careers advisor. Um, and that's such a throwaway term because, OK, fine. And what should I do? What should, do you know what I mean? It's And and I remember I, I flagged up to it was Bobby or Joe said it in the when I did the GB News thing. They were like, just go and speak to your careers advisor. That'll be fine. Sat there afterwards. I was like, "Do you really think that's just good advice? Because you you haven't really told them what they need to do. That just that's just go and talk to someone. Nine times out of ten, some kids won't even know who that is and and who to actually go and speak to. Maybe a member of SLT. They don't even know if this mm -hmm. if they're in a school environment. Um. So yeah, I think because of that, because we we're, we're probably as a nation maybe quite inclined to that. Oh, go speak to them, and we just sort of throw it away as a, as a bit of a term. That's obviously had probably a bit of a negative impact. Um, mm. there's, there's not a lot of guidance. I mean, I go back to my school days, which weren't a million miles ago. But if I went up to my maths teacher and said, "How do you? Uh, what? How can you support me in you know the conversation with with my careers?" Mm. Advice, they don't have. They don't know. So mm. there needs to be a wider education piece as well across. Um, teachers that aren't careers advisors to understand how they can advise their students to go and speak to the careers advisor to go and engage with content whether it's not going to uni or whatever else it is whether it's even things like UCAS obviously um and, and hopefully th these kind of building blocks and this information and this uh, understanding the benefits will have a, a knock-on impact mm -hmm. in a positive way um and that's 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 easier said than done, though. That's Rome wasn't built in a day. That's going to take time. I think there are signs it's improving. The work we're doing, we're doing a hell of a lot of work with schools and colleges now mm -hmm. about the education piece to actually ensure that teachers that aren't careers advisors understand. Yeah. If if little Jimmy comes up to them and says, "I've just been on not going to uni and I'm looking at a level three apprenticeship," that 
the teacher's not going, what's a level three apprenticeship? Yeah. Because believe me, there's a lot that do that. Um, yeah, so it's, I, it's, a big, it's a big piece of work, really. No, you're yeah, absolutely right. And I think, you know, we, we've got some comments in the chat we'll come, come on to, which sort of really allude to that. And then we will definitely have to move on because as <laughs> always, we're running over time. Um, but I think it's a really fair point. And you're right to acknowledge there is already some great work going on in that space. I know uh, Janet College, one of our previous guests on the show, has been doing this for, for a number of years now training for schools, training for teachers around things like Gatsby Benchmark 4, understanding how you can triage and how you can signpost and refer. Um, and lots of schools, you know, and lots of practitioners um, outside of schools in other contexts, you know, do that sort of thing really well. But I think you're absolutely right that on a general level, it's that awareness raising. And this is exactly what someone's mentioned in the chat. Facebook user talking about, you know, sharing stats and stories, you know, raising awareness exactly as you and Richard both said, beyond our immediate networks, you know, so that those stakeholders are kind of getting hit from different angles and on the platforms that maybe they're likely to be on. Um, it, would be, um, it would be interesting. I, I reckon schools mm. go and survey all the teachers and say, what does the careers leader do? Mm, yeah. And I, I would bet my bottom dollar. And same with universities, I reckon, as well. I don't think it's just a school thing. Mm. I reckon it's it's mm. universities. And I reckon most lecturers, teachers assistants won't know exactly what careers leader does yeah and then where and i think then that's an interest it's such an interesting conversation within the space of education in terms yeah. of you know whose responsibility is that is if you're a careers leader is that responsibility mm. yours to make sure yeah. that people understand what it is that you do what your functionality what your val what value is that you bring and then how do you demonstrate that and i just want to also make sure that i give a nod out to because i know we have viewers as well that watch who aren't working as career professionals within the educational setting and work with say perhaps you know those people who um you know, women returning back to work or older, yeah. you know, sort of kind of older workers. And again, even in those spaces, I hear time and time again, people saying, you know, don't have a clue that, you know, maybe somebody that's lost their job as a result of the pandemic. How many people think, oh, hang on a second, I need to speak to a careers advisor mm -hmm. because it's almost as if the brain goes, oh, that's only available if you're in school or if you're in mm -hmm. education, mm -hmm. that it's not available to me as a 40 something year old or a 50 something year old or a 60 something year old. But, you know, whether you like it or not, we do have the National Careers, you know, service and, you know, there is sort of limited, I, might, I will add, I know, uh, provision available for adults, um, you know, in, in different phases and stages of their careers, um, you know, and the comments are coming in thick and fast, but here's the thing, okay, we are now sadly out of time. So, you know, I'm going to say, and we could continue with this conversation. And I had a feeling that this would get the tongues wagging and would get us going and it would get our audiences who are watching as well going as well. Um, so I want to sort of kind of say thank you. Um, any sort of kind of, Chris, have we got any final thoughts, anything that we want to share as we wrap up and head on over yeah, to the new predictions? Definitely. I think, yeah, before we, just before we kind of round things off, I think, Rish, kind of be really good just to have your thoughts. If we've got people watching who are thinking, yeah, I've heard you today. I actually really want to go out there, spread the good word of careers where yeah. I can. Um, what would your sort of reflections be from having kind of done that yourself? So, Rish, if I come to you first, tips. you mentioned yeah. a little bit about, you know, your, your kind of how you did that with the radio. What would sort of be your top tips for spreading awareness, I guess, on an individual level? Um, I think that if you're going to get in touch, I mean, firstly, take the initiative because things like local radio, that's what the BBC are for. They're a public service broadcaster, local media. They've got loads of pages and pages of Internet to fill, so it can't hurt to ask. But if you do that, then think about your own branding. You've got to have a proposition now. What are you what do you want to raise and what angle are you coming at it from? Because you've got to make it something that's relevant for them. So that's what I did. I was like, okay, there's people looking for jobs in the pandemic and they may not be confident. I can address that. That was how I did it. You might have your own angle because of course, all of us work in different settings with different specialisms. So make the most of that. That's great. Thanks, Rish. And yeah, Connor, from your perspective, I know a slightly different angle in terms of kind of mm -hmm. approaching it from, from the organization as well, but um, any kind of top tips you'd share with our viewers? Make a lot of noise make loads of noise yeah. like, just be noisy like i when i came into not going to uni not going to uni was a stagnant business my first mission was to make lots of noise and in turn also do that with my personal brand and that's delivered a lot of benefit and a lot of stuff where i've not actually gone out and seeked the benefit it's come to me um i would recommend i know actually john morrison is in the chat i follow him on different social medias and he's great at doing it um making noise on on his platform so shout out john um <laughs> And, and a few other people. I know, Chris, you do as well. And we've obviously spoken at length. Like, mm. 
that pays Connor, dividends. if there was one thing that you've done, if there was one takeaway, like one thing that really kind of got you the results, got you to, you know, because you, like you say, mm. you can mm. bang the beat, beat the drum and there's yeah. lots of different ways that you can beat the drum. But if there was one thing that kind of, you know, has really made that impact, you know, yeah. taking, as you said, this from stagnant to, you know, to thriving, what has mm. that been? I think consistency, actually. Mm. Actually, the consistency of doing it. So it wasn't like I was banging the drum for a week and then vanished off. It's yeah. <laughs> It's a post a day. It's I am like a rash. I will you will see me, <laughs> you will see me somewhere, and it will. Do you know what I mean? And, and but that's what you've got to do. You've okay. got to be a bit bullish about it, and you've got to make yeah. noise. And there's a lot of people here with, like Richard said, probably really good stories to tell and really good information to give. So make loads and loads of noise and put yourself, like Richard, put yourself in places where you might not be comfortable. Approach local radio. Do whatever it is to make enough noise. And I think this is a really good lead into our next series, actually. We're not going to talk about it in too much detail, but, you know, we, we wanted to kind of make a move into looking at inclusivity within the career sector. And I think that thing about having stories to tell can often be sometimes on social media, you see the same people talking. And, and that's, you know, that's no knock on the people that are talking. But that idea, exactly as you're saying, both Connor and Rich, of, of you know, taking an if initiative and making sure that we're getting other people's stories out there as well. Lots of career professionals with lots to offer. Uh, and always important we make sure that you know those people have got the voice too so yeah really 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 great points thank you both for joining us um please do stay with us as we kind of finish off the very final part of the show but uh, once again massive thanks to rish and connor uh, for those who are still watching what a very very small part to do then we're going to be just kind of teasing the next series before we finish we're sorry we've run over but uh, this is us you, you know the score by now um now normally at this point we'd be doing the kind of cdi and general careers news but we're going to mix things up a little bit our CDI and careers news is going to be in the show resources document, which, as Sabir mentioned at the top of the show, it's going to be in the Facebook community of practice for the CDI. We'll be popping that in shortly after the show. But instead, what we're going to do today is we're going to revisit our January 2021 careers predictions to see how we got on and whether there was any accuracy at all in what we predicted leading into the new year. So, Sabir, I'm going to start with you. What were your predictions? <laughs> okay, so I think I've done all right. I'm going to give myself a little sort of kind of pat on the back. Okay, so these were my predictions at the beginning of the year. I can't even believe that it's been 12 months since we made these predictions. So here we go. Here we go. Okay, so number one was blended learning will become the new normal. I think it was here to stay. And guess what? It has. And I'm talking to a lot of sort of kind of educators, particularly in the educational space will embrace or get left behind. Um, and we are now seeing um, definitely within the sort of educational space, people embracing that. And I also kind of went on further to say that I think we're going to see a new type of university emerging. And I feel as if we're kind of seeing that now. You know, I'm seeing sort of adverts on my YouTube channel from the LSC talking about pure, purely full online sort of kind of courses that they are now running. And I think, I suspect that we're going to see more and more of this. Um, prediction number two was the impact of COVID will continue and we will continue to live and work under some kind of restrictive movement for the whole of 2021. Um, and it's going to be something that we're going to be telling our grandkids about in 20 years time. Well, guess what? It seems to be, you know, new restrictions have come back in again. So I think that's another check for me there. And then the final prediction that I made was back to... Um, Back to the future hoverboards. Um, this is where I was talking about that we were going to see more sort of kind of CC type um, chatbots will come on the market and beyond. And I've been really fortunate that I've actually, one of the projects that I'm working on, which is a Kickstarter program um, that I'm the head trainer for, for a national um, gateway provider, we've actually been really fortunate that we've been able to get in on the sort of kind of um, beta testing for the CC bot. But I also know as well, if you were at the conference last week, that you will have heard from what would you rather be, which is an AI powered careers mapping tool that is a total step change, um, you know, total step change from the standard three career quizzes. So I think we're going to be seeing more of that as well. And I'm excited about that. So I think I've done all right, Chris. What about you, Chris? I, 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 I think you've this? done pretty well. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of, yeah, I'm not 100% sure. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll let, the, let the public decide maybe for my ones. But so I think the first thing I had was around, uh, was probably a bit of a cop out, really, careers professionals having to be more creative to kind of, um, I guess, respond to sort of disruptions in particular sectors, particularly around things like hospitality, creative arts. Although interesting, obviously, the job market has kind of rebounded better than, than um, commentators were maybe expecting at that point when we were making those predictions. So slightly different. Um, but we've certainly seen that in higher education, I think, in terms of the way that we're 
you know, delivering careers content or I suppose even more encouragement of the non-linearity of careers uh, in response to kind of maybe how people's career plans might have changed with the pandemic. So I guess that was kind of, you know, maybe there, but a bit of a cop out. I think the second one, probably a little bit more accurate. I talked about well-being rather than kind of job insecurity, perhaps being more of a hook with careers conversations in the media. I think that's definitely happened. I think a lot of the articles I've seen over the past year in 2021 have been more about job satisfaction, career well-being, rather than necessarily just about Get job insecurity. So I th- I'm, I'm going to give myself maybe at least kind of 75% of a tick for that one. Um, and then final one, I've yeah, this was kind of my, my really bold claim, was around remote working, uh, particularly among graduates, been doing more for levelling up for regions than what the government were doing. Um, I don't know. I don't want to get political. Um, I guess levelling up is a, <laughs> a loaded term. Um, I think Charlie Balls talked quite a bit about this idea that remote working in theory could have uh, you know, made some changes to the graduate job market in terms of people maybe not needing to go to big cities or being able to kind of work remotely, particularly in graduate professional level jobs. How that might have an influence on how towns and cities in, in areas that haven't traditionally been invested in are kind of invested in, I think remains to be seen. But certainly kind of the regeneration of the high street in Sheffield, where I'm based, is a huge talking point. Lots of money going into it. Lots of thoughts about how the council are going to revamp things like the old John Lewis building um, or empty retail units in high streets. So maybe the changing face of the high street, regeneration and and levelling up, there's some connection there. But I don't think I was kind of uh, entirely on the ball with that last prediction. So <laughs> we'll give it half a mark, maybe. To um, I agree, Chris. I think that's a good mark. I mean, what were your predictions? Those of you that are watching us or maybe you're watching this on the replay. What were your predictions? And perhaps now that we're moving into 2022, um, I know our guests will have many predictions for their own space of work that they're working in. What are you coming up with? And sort of that really then kind of brings us on to the final, not only the final show of 2021, but the final show of this series. Is that right, Chris? Because what have we got coming up in the new year? It is, yeah. It is very sadly our last kind of show of the series, our last show of 2021. Um, As mentioned kind of a little bit earlier in the show, we're going to be back in in January. We're going to be sharing the dates sort of in the new year about when we're going to be coming back. We'll have the rescheduled show with uh, Professor Tristram Hooley about the career guidance guarantee to kick things off. Um, And then as mentioned earlier, we're going to be Focusing our next series a little bit more on the idea of inclusivity uh, within the career sector and looking at kind of particular areas where we can kind of improve things like uh, quality, diversity and inclusion um, and look at particular groups and and how the messaging around kind of career development and the support we provide is, you know, tailored or targeted towards those individuals. So lots of relevance to what Connor and Rish have been talking about today as well. Um, But all that really remains to be said is, uh, you know, a huge thank you to all of our guests from this series, but particularly today for, for Rish and Connor. Thanks for joining us. Um, massive thank you to Sabir as always being a brilliant co-host particularly with all our technical issues this series we made it Chris we made it look we're about to sign up and nothing went wrong yay and a uh, huge thank you to everyone who's kind of watched uh, either sort of recorded or live from this series um, again thank if you've you. got any kind of questions comments suggestions for the show get in touch with Sabir and I on LinkedIn or Twitter and uh, and yeah have a fantastic Christmas and a, and a happy new year See you all. thank you everybody